All right, hello everyone. This is Kuro Makai. I have Cloud Titan with me. We are going to go over an Exodia deck that we engineered. Uh, normally you see a magic card version, which is a very quick draw. However, we like the trap card version. Cloud, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Well, I'm doing pretty good, especially since we're going to be going over a video. So, as you can see, uh, we have a 40 card deck, very standard. Uh, we are using Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. This deck is valid for, of course, all uh, current Yu-Gi-Oh! programs, as well as the most updated ban listing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go into this. As you can see, we had three Cyber Valleys. It is um, mostly for stall. Just put it out in attack position. And if they attack, of course, you're going to get your one card draw. Very nice for the deck. But if you have a Battle Fader on the field still, either from your partner and tag duels, or you personally, you have a way to draw two cards. Anything you want to touch on? Nothing that I can really see fitting for Cyber Valley. I don't really use the third effect. Okay, what about Mystic Piper? Why do you like that card? Mystic Piper is really strong because all the monsters in this deck except for the head are level 1s. So you distribute the card, you draw a monster, you draw an extra card. It's just bonus draw power whenever you draw a monster. Cool, cool. And as I touched on earlier, Battle Fader big part of the deck. Whenever you are attacked directly, you can summon this guy in either attack or defense. Preferably special summon in defense. That way you don't take damage unless they have a piercing attack, of course. Which then again, you have ways to stall out regardless. So hopefully you don't take the damage because of piercing. And if they do have it, suck it up. It's going to hurt. Uh, next up we have our Swift Scarecrow. It's a very standard ha hand trap. Uh, Cloud, go ahead and tell us why it's a little bit better than Battle Fader. This one's slightly better than Battle Fader because this one doesn't require you summoning as there are multiple cards used to dis negate a summon or destroy a summoned monster. Uh, this also does not state that it needs to be discarded to the graveyard, which means any removed from play decks are not effective. Pretty good. Now, one thing I'm actually sad about is one day of peace being limited to one. I love the days where you could run three in a deck, and that was actually in the most recent, well, I can't say most recent, in the January listing, you could have three of them. They realized that power and took it down to one. Sad day for all of us, but we understand. Especially for a deck like this, you take no damage, you don't have to waste any stall cards, and you draw a card. Can't get much better than that. Now, uh, we have the Upstart Goblins. Of course, everything in this deck is going to be as many as you can have. Uh, Upstart Goblin, increase your opponent's life points. Very standard, and you draw a card. Very necessary. Now, we're going to get into this next. Uh, we'll skip over Gift Card for now, and we'll go straight to Hope for Escape. The reason why Hope for Escape is so well-loved in this deck is because the difference in life points equals how many cards you draw. Cloud, go ahead and touch in on a little bit about that. I love this card because it's for every 2,000 life point difference between you and your opponent, and this deck alone by itself can get your opponent upwards of 20,000 life points. Assuming you've taken a li minor damage along with using Hope for Escape, you're probably looking at drawing pro upwards of 7 cards. That's it's pretty the standard. It's the most, most powerful draw card in the deck. Absolutely. And the reason why we want to just force feed life points, again, Hope for Escape, very good. Upstart Goblin does that. That three, That's 3,000 points by itself. Plus, Hope for Escape is 1,000 damage to yourself. So that makes a, another gap. Now, the only downside to this card is you have to have either Upstart Goblin or Gift Card, which we're now going to touch on, active first. Because you have to have a 1,000 point difference under them to activate Hope for Escape. That way you are guaranteed at least one card for a draw. Try to save this in combination with Gift Card. Because what this does is this one card gives 3,000 life points. Most of the times your opponent's going to be really confused. They're going to think you're playing a bad reaction to Samochi deck. Or some kind of burn that revolves around giving life points. <coughs> Samochi is the only one currently. So, we force feed them life points to give us draw power. Speaking of draw power, we're going to go look at Accumulated Fortune, which we have three of. Cloud, hit me. This card is just a simple... Uh, trap card that allows you to draw two cards. The only requirement for it is that it be the fourth chain in a link. That means you have to have three cards activated in response to a different card effect before this card. Absolutely, and this deck is nothing but chains. 
as you can see, whenever you activate Battle Fader, if they attack, or Swift Scarecrow, or even Cyber Valley, as soon as they attack, that's one chain already hit because of your stall card. You can then flip a gift card, or a Hope for Escape, or a Jar of Greed that you see in the deck, or a Legacy of Yada Grasa. You can flip things, and as soon as they respond with their own monster effect, like perhaps um, Nate, uh, Nateria Barky on I had to think about that. There's yeah, a I... lot of different cards out there that will say, hey, I want to negate that effect. Or even Mystical Space Typhoon. Thanks for the free chain link. As long as you have uh, three... Or higher, you can activate Accumulated Fortune. Now, the only downside is you can't activate the same effect twice in the same chain. This does not apply when acu uh, stacking Accumulated Fortune, which you can only do twice. So, if you have two on the field, you can activate both of them within the same chain to meet its requirements. Yes. Speaking of all the draw power, I touched on Jar of Greed. We won't go into them. Reckless Greed. This seems more like a last-ditch effort to draw those cards, wouldn't you say? Uh, in tag duels, yes, because it will mess up your opponent or your ally. But in uh, single duels, uh, Reckless Greed is actually really good for this deck, as you can most likely draw into either stall or draw power. All right, we'll take that word for it. Now, why is Self Destruct Button in this deck? Self Destruct Button is simply uh, if you're going to lose, make it a draw, restart the match. Um, self destruct button simply says that you're not going to lose. Well, it's a good thing we have it, because I hate losing. Speaking of people who hate losing, we have all the Exodia pieces, and obviously we have them all nice and lined up to make him look pretty. Now, we could have assembled him in the actual deck to make it look fun, but let's be honest, it looks better this way. So, guys, this is our Exodia deck. We're going to go over a few little combos right here, right now, on how to use this properly and an ideal hand. I would personally say an ideal hand would be a gift card, a hope for escape, accumulated fortune, and either Jar of Greed or Legacy of Yadagarasu. Those cards right there will already give you four car uh, six cards of draw power alone. With four cards, you can get uh, six cards. That's not shabby, especially when you already are going to draw into your stalls with one day at peace, or you're one of 12 monsters. Seeing as, uh, seeing as how 9 of the 12 monsters can be used to stall, it is very likely that you'll be drawing into a stall of some kind. Absolutely, and that's what Mystic Piper there is for, as you mentioned earlier, to help you draw out these monsters. And again, if you do draw out one of your monsters, except the head, you will draw another card, which is always very nice. Uh, things not to do. As we mentioned, Reckless Greed is a bad thing to do in tag matches unless your opponent, I mean your partner, has the ability to take care of themselves. And shortly after this, we will be releasing the partner deck to this. It is one I personally engineered to be the perfect ally to this Exodia deck. So guys, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please post them in the video below and we will get right to them. Again, I am Kuro Makai, and I have Cloud Titan with me. See you later. Take it easy, guys.